Welcome to Tech Presence with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to export all tables from Azure SQL DB to CSV files in Azure Data Factory Pipeline. So that's uh, pretty easy, actually. And uh, I was totally surprised uh, when I was uh, taking a look. Like, oh, this is this is cool. Uh, like in SSIS, uh, we have used import, export wizards, and all those kind of things. Uh, but here, uh, the, the 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 part I was using it, uh, it was very easy. So I thought uh, I should share with you guys. Uh, so first of all, this is my Azure portal and I have a blob storage here. So in the blob storage, I have created a container and it's called input container. You can create a container with any name you like. So if you guys notice that right here and I do not have any Azure SQL uh, database created here. So there is another subscription I have uh, that, that that's where I have my Azure SQL. But um, just to let you know, if uh, you have Azure SQL in different subscription, you can use uh, even in a in different subscription and create the files and all that. So no, not a big deal. As long as you can connect by using a username and password, you should be fine. So this is my Azure. Uh, SQL DB uh, and uh, one of the DB is called SSIS DB so I do not have really like um, most of the time I create tech bridges and all that databases uh, here I'm going to use SSIS DB because this has uh, tons of table and it's easy for me to create the demo so what we are going to do here we are going to just uh, go to database engine copy this uh, 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 name of server and uh, then we are going to go back to our uh, portal and here we will go to the tech process IT data factory and uh, now click on uh, studio Azure data factory okay here you are going to go to the home instead of uh, creating author because uh, I, I noticed that if I go to the author there is tons of uh, things I have to do by myself and uh, do it but here uh, I'm going to tell you a quick trick that's going to be very helpful go to home and uh, we are going to click on ingest so think about the import export wizard in SQL server you have used so right now we can uh, run once or we can schedule it if you want and we can also do tumbling window I have created multiple videos on tumbling window uh, where you can provide uh, the date range you know and uh, use multiple windows of those date range to extract data but in our case we are just going to be fine with the run one once now and uh, we are going to click next and here i'm going to select my source uh, data store now i'm going to go to new connection and uh, here it's going to give me all those options so there are 90 connectors available as of now for from which you can extract the data or even load the data and all that so in my case i'm going to go to the azure sql database click right there and now what we are going to do i'm going to leave the connection name as it is uh, as uh, this is not in my subscription so uh, I can't really select the subscription because I don't have SQL server so I'm gonna go enter manually and here it is asking me hey fully qualified the domain name so I'm gonna paste the name of my SQL uh, Azure SQL DB here and then uh, the database name it says ISDB that's the name and the uh, username TB user and uh, my favorite password that you don't know okay so now we are going to test our connection and the connection should be test successful great so hit uh, create it's going to create a linked service or connection to our SSIS DB that I just showed you on this server okay so now uh, that's pretty awesome it got connected right away and it is showing us so all those tables so see these are tons of tables we have now it is giving us a different option such as a source tables use query so if I select query and I, if I want to select data from some specific table I can only do one table but in my case I am going to go existing tables because I would like to uh, create to the CSV file for multiple tables so I can select all here and these are 45 objects you know and uh, there are some views and all that so you can select whatever you want in my case uh, I'm gonna go maybe if just for four of them why because I don't want to pay the money for the just copying the data from uh, Azure to the blob you know so uh, let's uh, you know just copy four or five of them that's fine with me but uh, you can select all of them whatever you like or if you would just want to extract for one table you can always write the query or even write a complex query by joining some tables and all that and uh, that will extract you the data so this is one way to extract the data right so hit next and what's going to happen now it is asking you you want to preview the data so you can always go click on this guy preview data and uh, then you can see the data 
right? So you, then you can close. If you want to go to the next one, you can preview the data. So whatever, you know, uh, tables, it is going to show you the data, you know, available. In some of the tables, we have the data. In some of the tables, we don't have the data. That's fine for me. So I'm going to hit uh, next. And now what we will do, we will select our destination data store. Now, here you have uh, all those uh, different connections available. Again, in my case, uh, I'm not interested in uh, any other things, uh, but only the blob storage. So I'm going to go ahead and create new and uh, click right there, Azure blob storage. And uh, I'm going to select uh, my subscription. And then I'm going to select my tech browser storage because that's where I would like to create the CSV files. So create that uh, link or connection. Uh, and it is a, it's a ready now what we have to do we have to browse and in our case we would like to save the csv files in the input to container hit ok and now go to advance here you can uh, edit file names one by one if you like now what happened whatever the table names were they, these are the exact file name are gonna be you know and you can see right there now the uh, the file extension is a dot txt so if you want to be like no i want we have like csv csv right so you can do that as well no big deal so whatever you want to change you can change it right here and also let's say if you don't want to be like internal and uh, just want to remove internal film of these guys and say hey i'm not interested to show the internal part of it so you can make those changes so right there i'm just gonna remove that Okay, so this is gonna be all looking good, and the uh, rest uh, is uh, fine. You know, can you can go with it. Okay, hit next, and uh, now it is giving you more options. So file format is in text format. You have a uh, Avro JSON format, ORC format, and uh, Parquet uh, for Parquest format. So some of the English names, honestly, I don't really can pronounce. So uh, just let me go with that. It's all right. You know, a lot of people come back and you say your accent is not great. Yeah, I know that <laughs> because um, uh, accent does change with the passage of time. So does human change with the passage of time. So just live with it. It's okay. So uh, I'm just kidding. So anyways, column uh, delimiter, you can go ahead and select whatever you like here. And in my case, I'm gonna be fine with comma delimited file. And uh, row delimiter, you have all those different options here, line feed, carriage return, and no delimiter as well. And uh, you have advanced uh, backslashes, double quotes, uh, and tons of other information that you can use. Um, in my case, I'm gonna be like hit next uh, and uh, provide my pipeline name, uh, name. I'm going to call this one export to CSV uh, files. Okay. Now um, uh, this is okay. I don't care. Leave everything as it is. Hit next uh, and uh, take a look on the summary. If everything looks great, hit next. Uh, and now it should be validating first, uh, creating data sets, uh, creating pipeline, and running pipeline. So finish. And now we can go to the pipeline here and uh, see right there and export to CSV files. So that's our pipeline. And if we can go to the uh, right there monitor, and uh, here I can go and uh, go to the pipeline name, and I can select the pipeline and I can remove all the others and see this pipeline is in progress right now so it is a uh, working just uh, give it a few seconds it should be completing where is the refresh button right there okay so the pipeline got completed successfully so i can go and take a look uh, on consumption so i can see data movement activities how much it is used you know and all those uh, so quantity six uh, so you can it, it is really good idea actually when you are doing this do for few tables so you can see how much price uh, you will pay for the entire database but anyways you can click on the export to csv files there and then you're gonna see all those details here so in this case you see that it use the for each loop and then inside the for each loop the number of tables is to loop through for each of them let's go on the pipeline and take a look so we are here in the pipeline and we can see the for each loop if i will be a totally new developer in adf as i am right now and uh, i'm learning too so i actually would love to create the pipelines uh, uh, from the 
from the method we just did uh, because uh, then I can see how the uh, uh, Microsoft engineers has designed this, uh, what type of uh, parameter they create, uh, how they will loop through the uh, list of the tables, uh, how they will make it, the things dynamic. So it is uh, really uh, good for me to learning. So uh, first of all, we are going to go to parameters and here is the CW items. So it is an area type parameter and what they did, uh, they have saved the table names. So see right there. So you have a uh, right there, uh, they have source table. So let me copy this guy actually. So this is a JSON type of uh, formatting here. I'm gonna just paste there. So if you see, hmm, I don't know if this is gonna be like a great, but uh, let me, let me open format JSON online. We will, let's see if we will pay somewhere and take a look. So process, okay, see, this is much better. So you have source and in the source you have table and uh, see so right there, destination, that's your destination and see there is another source under the source you have table and then you have destination. So this is a, a complete uh, uh, JSON array they have created. So they have created a table, they have created a destination file so see table and file name so these both will be used so let's go back here and take a look at how they use this uh, uh, entire thing so let me go back here and uh, now so they have this uh, uh, parameter and in the parameter this is array and uh, they have saved the file the table name and file name now inside the for each loop they went to the settings and here in the item you see that they are using cw.items okay so they're getting the entire array you know they're using this array see right there cw item so they're using this array right there so they're using this array right see right there this is the guy okay so array has the values right so what values it has so let me see if i can make a small okay so i did make it small pretty faded but anyways so go to the for each loop again and inside the for each loop we understand uh, they got the item names, uh, you know, CW item name from the parameter. Click on uh, this uh, configuration and now they are using copy activity. Inside the copy activity, go to source and here in the source, uh, you will, let me see if I can make this bigger or small let me, or navigate this here so you guys can see it bigger. Okay, so here see that the table, that's where they are using a source dot table. So item right there at the red item let me copy so i can make it big for you guys and show you let me paste it right there so from parameters right so from the array parameter this value was passed to the for each loop so it become at the rate items so it has tons of item right and there was source that i showed you in the json and that source has table so we need a table name right to read so that's where the table name is coming in the our source it looks good now what's happening here in the sync side and uh, you see that this is a parameter and then if you go to the uh, linked service and here uh, go to parameter and this is a data set parameter so that's what they use in connection cw dot table and that uh, very parameter is uh, mapped to this guy okay see cw table is mapped to this guy right there and this value is coming from our for each loop and uh, uh, for each loop is getting the value from the parameter that's area type let's go to sync and the same thing is happening now remember i showed you in the json right there see the file name so destination file name so if you go back here see right there destination and file name so item dot destination dot file name from that JSON value, we are getting the file name. So for each of the node, there is a source and there is a uh, table is a source and the, in, the, the, in the destination we have file name. So that's how the Microsoft engineers have thought through. Okay. So if you go to the open and it, this is a connection and they have created this connection and you see right there parameter, they create a CW file name, they're using this connection right there. And then if you go back to the actual pipeline this parameter show up right here okay so they have passed this value right there okay so this is coming from our for each loop and then the destination and then you have file name 
looks awesome. So on each of the loop, the value for our source, that's a table name is going to change. Then again in the sync, the file name is going to change and that's how the files will be created. Now let's, uh, as the pipeline has run automatically, when we created the pipeline and say run once, so we should be good. Let's go to the output right there and go to the our blob storage, go to the container, go to the input container and look, uh, all those files has been created from our uh, table. So, so let's uh, click right there, catalog.properties.csv and uh, let's take a look on the data. So see, beautiful. This is how you will uh, export your uh, all the table from SQL, uh, Azure SQL database uh, to your blob storage. Uh, so I thank you for watching this video and uh, spending time with me. Go ahead and subscribe my channel if you guys like my effort and I will see you guys in next video.